and right. Sid Fernandez can continue to warm up. Pete Van Weeren has a starting lineup. Thank you, Ernie. And I once again, everyone, the New York Mets against the right-hander Jim Acker throw a totally different looking lineup in game two. Lenny Dykstra will lead off and play center field. The number two hitter will be the second baseman, Wally Beckman. Keith Hernandez will hit third. He'll play first base. Daryl Strawberry in the cleanup spot in right field. Danny Heat bats in the number five position. He will play left field. Howard Johnson gets the start at third base in tonight's second game. He will bat sixth. Ed Hearn, the rookie catcher, will bat seventh. Rafael Santana hits eighth. He'll play shortstop. And Sid Fernandez on the mound, left-hander with a record of 12 and 2 this year and a 2.83 earned run average. He's 1 0 against the Braves, 2 0 lifetime against Atlanta. For the Braves, against Fernandez, a lot of right-handed bats. Billy Sample leads off and plays right field. Rafael Ramirez will play third base and bat second. Dale Murphy hits third and plays center field. Ted Simmons, who drove in the winning run in tonight's first game, starts at first base in game two in the cleanup spot. Terry Harper will bat fifth and play left field. Andres Thomas is the shortstop. He'll bat sixth. Bruce Benedict does the catching and he will bat seventh. Glenn Hubbard hits eighth and plays second base. And pitching, making his first start for the Braves after several relief appearances, right-hander Jim Acker. Acker with no record for Atlanta. Earned run average of four. This will be his first start. As we mentioned, he has appeared in seven games as a relief pitcher. The umpires will be making their way out here shortly. In game two, Larry Poncino will call the balls and strikes. Billy Williams will work at first. Joe West at second. And Frank Pulley over at third. Well, the Braves have an excellent opportunity here to get themselves out of last place in the National League West. They began the day a game behind fifth place Los Angeles. Well, the Dodgers have lost and the Braves have won, so the Dodgers and Braves just about even now. San Diego has also lost their ball game today, so do within two games of San Diego, who began the day in third place. The division's that tight. All you have to do is win a couple of ball games, and you can move up a spot or two. And if the Braves can win here, they will pass the Los Angeles Dodgers and move up one notch anyway, back to fifth. The Cardinals beat San Diego today 4-2. The Cubs over the Dodgers 9-5. Houston at Philadelphia. The Astros are losing 3-1, going to the bottom of the fourth. Montreal at Cincinnati. The Reds are dropping that one. It's 4-1 Expos after four and a half. And San Francisco has just beaten Pittsburgh 9-0. Steve Carlton pays his first dividend as a Giant. That's his first win since the Giants signed him. He got relief help from Frank Williams in the eighth inning. They combined for a four-hitter. In the American League, Minnesota beat the Yankees 8-4. It was Baltimore over Chicago 2-1. California defeated Boston 4-1. Oakland shut out Toronto 2-0. Detroit leads Kansas City 3-1. They've played two innings. And Cleveland at Texas, Milwaukee at Seattle, not yet underway. So you're up to date on all the other scores. A near sellout crowd here tonight. A lot of Mets fans included, but the Braves fans far outnumbered them, and they were very happy with that outcome in game one. And maybe that's the kind of game, Ernie, that can get the Braves going a little bit after such a sluggish couple of weeks. When you go into a twi-night doubleheader against the New York Mets and Dwight Gooden on the mound in game one, you win a game like that, and that just lifts everybody up. Yes, you do, uh, especially if the team is like the Mets, 15 games in front in their division, because what you want to make the players feel if you're the manager is that they can play with anybody. And uh, so if you beat the Mets, even though the Mets have the edge in the season series, it's a real pick-me-up. And uh, they did that with a run in the bottom half of the ninth, a very exciting ball game. Gooden went the first seven innings, and McDowell came on, was charged with the loss. Zane Smith pitched very well, five innings. But we still haven't a report, unless you've got a report on radio, just what happened to Zane Smith and Craig McMurtry. They were both removed from the ball game as though a finger, a tendon in a finger, was bothering them. It's a very unusual injury, and to see it occur twice in one game is, is really rare. I have not heard anything further than you have, except that they did remove Smith and then McMurtry from the game, and both had very similar complaints that the middle finger on their pitching hand had become sore or hurt, and uh, they were looking for a tendon strain or something like that. Uh, I know they also check in situations like that for the possibility of a stress fracture. It's a very rare thing to have happen, but there have been pitchers before who have thrown a ball and all of a sudden stepped off the mound and either flexed their hand or even the forearm bone in a couple of instances. Craig Swan, when he was in the minor leagues, threw a pitch 
hurt his forearm and they examined him two or three times before they found out that he had actually suffered a stress fracture throwing the ball. So they have to be very careful about that type of injury and hopefully hopefully we say the injuries aren't serious because if you lose two pitchers in one shot that's a pretty good blow. Especially when you're not getting very many complete games. Dale Murphy acting captain went out for the meeting at home plate and uh, if you lose two pitchers right at this particular point and you're not getting too many starting games well you're going to have to go down to Richmond and get some help and uh, I know from experience when you enter your hand or your arm on a warm day then the next day it's certainly going to hurt because usually you feel that uh, it's warm you're not going to hurt yourself but uh, it would surprise me if, uh, if uh, Smith or McMurtry could throw a baseball tomorrow but we'll just wait and see. One thing that it does losing two pitchers in one ball game like that it kind of straps Chuck Tanner for the second game. First of all he's taking Jim Acker out of the bullpen to start tonight. So he's down to five people in the bullpen anyway. Now Craig McMurtry is gone. That leaves him with four. And Jeff Bedman worked two innings and Paul Ossenmacher worked two in the first game. So it's fairly important here that Jim Acker be able to give Chuck Tanner four or five good innings anyway. Because if you need help real early in the game you might have to send David Palmer out to throw a little bit last night out there to be a long man. That might be the case. He might be the long man David Palmer uh, in tonight's ball game in the second one. But uh, we've we both done the Chuck Tanner show. Uh, it's Skip Carey's show but when Skip isn't here we have done it and uh, we know how he feels about that bullpen. In fact one of the things that bothered him about going to a five man rotation he'd look you right in the eye and said look it if you use a four man rotation you have six men available in the bullpen and we need six. But he reluctantly went to the five man rotation and he told us now I've only got five men in the bullpen. Well now he's well, right only got now four. he's only got a yeah with two guys out in he's short and Acker making his first start has a couple of more tosses he's going to his curveball now they got Acker from Toronto along with Doyle Alexander they were separate deals Smith had uh, had pitched so well last time out he pitched into the eighth inning and this time he had gone five innings allowed only three hits and. The two runs was a result of a two run home run by Mookie Wilson that came in the third inning. But enough on the first game. We've got another one to do. And the Braves will face the Mets. Len Dykstra, who didn't start the first contest, he came on as a pinch hitter and lined a double to left over Griffey's head that bounced against the wall. It's surprisingly that it carried that well. And they scored in that inning to tie the ball game. And I was happy to see Paul Ostenmacher then set him down the next inning to pick up the win. First pitch is high, 1 0. Oh. Now the 1 0, oh, swung on high pop, short right. Billy Sample in, under. That's 1 down. Dykes replies to right. The Reds and the Expos are tied 4-4 in the seventh. Now Wally Backman, who didn't play in the first game, he's batting 335, no homers and 17 RBI. Davy Johnson uses everybody. He platoons, he loves to do it. And he's one of the strong opponents of the 24-man roster. He just says it really hurts him. He'd like to see it go back to 25. But he'll live with a 24 as everyone else has. There's a foul away off to the left. Going well. One out. Hacker's got a good sinker ball. Slider and curve. Nothing fancy about him. Here's the 0 1. By that I mean no trick pitches. One ball, one strike. He originally signed with the Braves. Toronto picked him out of the draft. Bobby Cox had something to do with that because he knew a lot about Acker when he was with the Braves. Outside, two and one. So Bobby Cox comes over here and gets Acker back, along with Alexander. Two balls, one strike. Bouncer, Hubbard to first. Two down.
Keith Hernandez was hitless in the first game. He went 0 for 4. The finales tomorrow will be on air at 2.05. Two Ricks are pitching, Mailer and Aguilera. Two away, top of the first. Pete Van Weren and Ernie Johnson with you on Braves TV. No television from Houston on Monday, except for national TV. We'll have the Braves game on 100 radio stations in the southeast with the flagship WSB. Television on Tuesday and Wednesday. Strike call, 0-1. Fernandez with a little too much dirt in his spikes. And the 0 1. Hello. You'll see a lot of sinkers tonight from Acker. One ball, one strike. Be a great pick me up if Acker. As Pete mentioned, could give Chuck Tanner six or seven strong innings. The 1-1. One, one. Hit hard, but right at Hubbard. That's a 1-2-3 for Jim Acker. They fail to score, and the Braves are coming to back. All right. Defensively, you can see how the Mets line up behind Sid Fernandez. What a have you watch the way Fernandez pitches. He's a big guy, but in his delivery, he seems to go into a crouch. See that right there? And then spring out at you. And hitters like Dale Murphy will tell you that it's hard to pick up his fastball. He seems to short arm the ball, and the ball rises. And the Los Angeles Dodgers don't make many mistakes. But they will agree with you that they made a mistake in trading Sid Fernandez away as a young kid. They traded him away for Carlos Diaz and an infielder. And Fernandez now has become one of the best left-handers in the business. But they needed relief out and they needed it from an experienced left-hander. Sacco with a single to right field. Make it right center. Sample, who didn't play in the first game, starts the bottom of the first with a single. That's his specialty. He's a first ball, fastball hitter. He's looking for that fastball from Fernandez. And he got it right down the middle of the plate. Now Rafael Ramirez, his first appearance of the night. Samples fast. Fastball on one. One of the raps against Fernandez when he was with the Dodgers as he was inclined to put on weight. He used to get awfully big. He doesn't have that problem anymore. Of course, pitching nine innings every or eight innings every fifth day is going to help you. Foul away. But he's watched his weight. Let's check it out. He is. That's what he's listed at. As a young man, he used to get up to 240 or 250. I don't think that went over very well with the Dodgers. Big. Great stats in the minor leagues. Runner going, fall away. Checking over his minor league career was San Antonio in 83. Fernandez struck out 209 in 153 innings. It's unbelievable. Murphy on deck. 
outside. I liked his line when he was selected to the National League All-Star pitching staff. He said, this is really a big deal back in my home state of Hawaii. He said, I'm as big there now as Jack Lord. <laughs> I think Jack Lord sent him a telegram after that <laughs> statement. Samples back. One ball, two strikes. Fastball strikeout. Oh, he can bring it up there. Here's Murphy. Ramirez gets a piece of this, but he gets around late on it. And you see that happen a lot on Sid Fernandez fastball. They claim, and they insist this is true, that Fernandez does not throw above 90 miles an hour. It certainly looks like he does. Maybe it just appears that way because of his delivery and where he releases the ball. They say his top speed 87 88 miles an hour. It always looks like he throws faster than that. But all the scouts who have run the gun on him say nope he never never gets over 90. One of the reasons he goes into that crouch is his stride is tremendous. That right leg really comes out there. Fernandez tied for second in the league with 12 victories, six in strikeouts with 110, and tenth in ERA, 2.83. That's a double play ball is short. And they got it. Murphy hits into a double play, 6-4-3. Sample singles wasted. We go to the second, no score. about this but we check between games and sure enough this telecast is also authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves. It's intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and the publication rebroadcast retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. Okay Professor. Here's Daryl Strawberry. He rested the first game. Did you happen to note him taking batting practice tonight? Or was he putting on a show for the early arriving fans? He's got that leverage, Edmund. Oh. He was hitting them up in the blue seats up near club level at times. They set the center. Strawberry with a single. They tend to rest him against lefty. He's still a kid. They don't want him to think that he can't hit left-handers. He still plays against them, but not all the time. Here's Danny Heap. He didn't play in the first game. Shows you how deep this Mets ball club is. They run an outfield out there in game one of George Foster, Mookie Wilson, and Kevin Mitchell. Three new outfielders here in game two, and all good ones. Heap, Dykstra, and Strawberry. Strike call. Packers 27 years old, 6'2, 212. Had a good year last year at Toronto. He won seven, lost two, ERA 3.23, and saved 10 games. Runner going. Throw by Benedict. He's going to be. Safe. Fans don't like it. Thomas came over. On a replay, we might see that he bobbled the ball. We'll look at it again. Looked like he had a chance to get him out. Joe West took a good long look at this down at second base. And Ted Simmons and Joe West getting into it now. The throw got there in time. Thomas just didn't get the glove over there quickly enough. Strawberry beat it. Ted Simmons had a couple of words for Joe West while we were watching the replay. And Joe took a little stroll over toward Ted. Said, you mind your own business over there, big guy. Well, he took the glove right off uh, Thomas's hand, and that might have been the ruling. Watch the glove go off. So with the glove knock off the hand, that might be the ruling. Can't be out if you don't have the glove on your hand. And the pitch. Ball high because it looked like the throw was there. So a stolen base for Strawberry. Yeah. 
Heap's been a good part time player. Good pinch hitter. Nobody out of runner at second. To third. Ramirez looks a runner back and throws a hitter out. Next batter is Howard Johnson. Well, this will make Danny Heap upset with himself. You don't want to hit a ball to that side when you've got that runner at second. Ramirez made sure Strawberry was going nowhere and then threw him out. Here's Johnson. Had a sacrifice in the first game. Deadman pitched well in that first game. A couple of shutout innings. I mentioned Ossenbacher after allowing a run to tie the game. He got the side out in order in the ninth. And then the Braves won it in the bottom of the ninth. Ken Griffey led it off with a double. And he later scored on a sacrifice fly or a line drive if you will by Ted Simmons it wasn't really very deep but Griffey can still run strike call Hearn is on deck one out a runner second With a big lead. Just outside. Strawberry now with 22 stolen base have been caught only six times. I think the Mets are worried their leads cut to 14 and a half games. I don't think they're losing any sleep over it yet. Montreal's tied 4 4. Knock about nine seven. more games off that lead, though, they'll start thinking. What a comfortable feeling it must be to be that far out in front with just a all about 66 or 67 games remaining. High pop along the left field foul line. Thomas in pursuit, so is Ramirez, but it's out of reach. Well, if the Mets don't win the National League East this year, that would go down as one of the all-time fades in the history of baseball. That'd be right up there with the Phillies blowing it in the final week back in under Gene Mock there. And some of the other clubs that have let him get away. The Cubs, who the Mets caught in 1973, had something like an 11 game lead with a month and a half to go. But if the Mets leading by 15 games at this stage in the season don't win, he'll be reading about that in the next 50 years. Should be an investigation of some sort. We'll have 69 games left after today. The the uh, El Foldo you're talking about happened in 1964, and Gene Mock doesn't need any reminding, but it keeps coming up during every pennant drive. Did he go? No, he didn't. In 1964, the Phillies had a six-game lead, and they only had 12 games to play. Now, you're going to start spending your World Series check. This was no championship series. You were going to be in the World Series. They lost 10 games in a row and lost the pennant. Six games ahead with only 12 to play. 3-2. Driven a right field. The ballpark might not hold it. It won't. Home run. Why well, he's done that from time to time. Johnson a home run. It is two to nothing. Howard Johnson has good power and most of it from the left side. His seventh homer of the year, six of them have been hit lefty, and that's a beautiful swing. He got all of that pitch. 
And the Mets start out this one the same way they did the last game. A 2-0 early lead and a two-run homer. Mookie Wilson did it in the first game. Howard Johnson's done it now. This is Ed Hearn, who doesn't get to play often, bouncing the ball to third. Ramirez should throw him out, and he does. Hearn, the catcher, is out number two. The first game, Wilson's home run came in the third inning. In the second game, Johnson's in the second inning. Here comes Santana. The launching pad has given up two home runs tonight, both to the Mets. Bill Robinson coaches first, Bud Harrelson third. And the fastball is low, one and oh. Yankees lost today, so did the Red Sox. Boston still four up. Bounce foul. Fast third. Cleveland's playing Texas tonight. California was, so they lead Texas by two and a half right now in the American League West. Strike outside corner. Larry Poncino calling the balls and strike. Fly ball center. Lazy. Murphy's got it. Santana's out. But the Mets pick up two. We go to the bottom of the second. Two nothing, New York. Sunday, she's beautiful, alluring, and a spy. But when she tangles with Glenn Ford, she gets more than she bargained for. The Redhead and the Cowboy. 505 Eastern on the Superstation Sunday. We're going to the bottom of the second. Ted Simmons will lead it off. We'll be followed by Terry Harper and Andres Thomas. Rick Lockwood, who played his high school baseball at Maris High right here at, in Atlanta and also played at Georgia Tech, is now in the New York Met organization. The Orioles traded him to the Mets, and Rick's playing at Jackson, Mississippi. That's Texas League, and it's a good league, and he's having a good year. 272 is his latest batting average. Rick Lockwood. Simmons had the sack fly that won the game in the first half of this doubleheader. He did it batting lefty, and the fastball's high. One and all. One ball and strike. Batters have said when, I don't know how he can get much better, but when Fernandez gets good control of his curveball, <laughs> you're really going to be in trouble. Foul away. His One control and has improved every year. He used to be very wild when he was first coming up in the Dodger organization. He'd, he'd pitch a lot of those games where he'd walk about seven and strike out 12. He's not walking people like he used to anymore. Now the one two pitch. Foul up this way right underneath the boot. The Giants have won their game nine nothing Steve Carlton got the win Williams also pitched and there will be a game and a half back of Houston if the Phillies beat the Astros. And they are beating him right now, 3-2 in the six. Two-two pitch. There's that slow curve. He struck him out. After those blazing fastballs, he flipped up a curveball. Simmons caught looking. And you can see Simmons was really fooled by this. He almost starts walking away from it before it gets there. He was looking for the fastball. He didn't get it. Second strikeout for Fernandez. 
Uh, Terry Harper making his first appearance of the night. Batting 429 in his last 10 games. On one. Thomas is on deck. The Mets had split one doubleheader and swept two coming into tonight's window. Hit foul past third. The Braves had played one doubleheader and lost it. That was up in Cincinnati. The Reds kind of been an up and down team. They mm -hmm. started to make a move on first place and now they've slid back a bit. Foul away. Harper loves to hit off lefties. One ball, two strikes. And he's going to be alive for that little curve ball. Signed by Hearn and the one two pitch. That's a sinking fastball, two and two. Cut at that fastball. Chicago Cubs beat the Dodgers 9 4 today. Braves with a win here could put the Dodgers back in the cellar. They were a game behind them when the day started. 2 2. Just outside. There was a slow curve, but it didn't get it in there. So a payoff pitch to Terry Harper. Popped him up. Back minute second. Two away. Thomas with Benedict on deck. Thomas in the first game went 0 for 3. Benedict didn't play in the first game. On one. Fernandez, who was born in Hawaii, delivers the 0 1 pitch in a time. One ball, one strike. White Gooden wasn't involved in the decision in the first game. He pitched well, seven innings, four hits, three runs, one walk, and five strikeouts. A little bit high, two and one. We haven't the attendance figures yet, but it's got to be. 40,000 plus. Now the 2 1 pitch. Boy, what a fastball. 2 and 2. That just went up. They say his fastball rises. That and one had. To. Even if he hit that thing, as Terry Harper showed the last at bat, when you hit that rising fastball, you tend to pop it up. Fernandez doesn't get many ground balls. A lot of pop ups and fly balls and strikeouts. And a 2 2 pitch. There it is, Pete. Papa. Fernandez may have a play, and it does. Fernandez gets Thomas to pop to Hernandez on a foul. We go to the third inning. New York 2, Atlanta nothing.
Sunday morning. That's tomorrow morning, 10.35 Eastern Time. The Magnificent Seven on the Sunday Award Theater on TBS. Eli Wallach, Steve McQueen, Horst Buckholz, James Coburn, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, and Yul Brynner star in a great movie, The Magnificent Seven. That's tomorrow morning, 10.35 Eastern Time, right here on the Superstation. We're going to the third inning. Fernandez will lead it off. Well, it's that time of the year again. American Legion baseball will be taking place. The tournaments all around the country. Post 95 in Eastridge, Tennessee is hosting the Tennessee State Finals of American Legion Baseball at Engel Stadium right up here in Chattanooga, August 7th through the 10th. And the champions of the state tournaments and Puerto Rico, they advance to regional tournaments. Then the big event is the World Series in Rapid City, South Dakota, August 28th through September 1st. And we want to wish everyone luck. Boy, American Legion Baseball is so important to the not only the, the youngsters, their family, they get a big boot out of it. And so many major leaguers played American Legion Baseball. And we hope we have some exciting tournaments this year. This is Fernandez with a strike. Bouncer second. One down. A lot of times you talk about the American Legion, you're thinking just, well, American Legion baseball. They do a lot more than that. They participate in so many worthwhile events, worthwhile causes. They're an unselfish bunch of people. One out. But those American Legion baseball tournaments are really something to see. You get the cream of the crop of these young kids playing baseball. A lot of them go on to college, get scholarships. Some go into professional baseball. One and out to Dykstra. That's well hit in the right field. Dykstra with a single right. He got his first chance to play a lot of baseball in the major leagues this year, mainly due to the fact that uh, Mookie Wilson was hurt and Dykes has really taken advantage of it. This year he's 16 for 32 now against the Braves. It's 500. And he's just a kid. In fact, it was cute in, the, in New York on the Ralph Kiner show. He had his mother. Ralph got his mother to come on with him on the postgame show. He was squirming a little bit, but it was a it was a cute show. Mother looked like she was about 35. Dykstra's not very old. Looking it up right now. Pitch is high. He's only 23 years old. 5'10, 160. You get Backman and Dykstra together. They're very similar. They don't hit the ball out of the ballpark. They run well. Backman's up there now. Dykstra's going. The throw by Benedict. Safe. He stole that one on the pitcher. Got a big jump. Throw was high, but he was in there on his stomach. He got anyway. a tremendous jump. Benedict had no chance on that one. We'll see Dykstra slide in before the ball even gets there. One out, runner second. That's his 20th stolen base. He's been caught only five times. Now the 1-1. One, one. Curveball and a good one. One and two. On the steal, you can see Backman fake the bunt. He wasn't going to bunt. Just tried to disturb Benedict a little bit. Here's a one-two pitch. Low. Two balls and two strikes. 
The Braves did something in that first game that been difficult for them to do this year. Before a huge crowd, they won it. An exciting finish. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch is a curve that hangs high. Braves are now 44 and 51. Three and two. first it is foul count stays three and two Dykstra back to second on deck is Keith Hernandez just to show you how fast things can change if the Braves could win here the second game and Houston loses Atlanta's eight games out of first place. They went into yesterday's game 10 games out. They mm -hmm. pick up two games in in a day. The rain out provided them with a half game. Foul away. Well, there just doesn't seem to be any team in the Western Division that is going to walk away from the rest of the division. Every time a team that puts a little spurt on and looks like they're going to make some make some progress they run into a roadblock and lose a few games and somebody else gets hot looks like that's the way this division is going to be all the way and it might be the hot team down the final month that wins it no team like the Mets who went out in front quickly and just kept on playing great baseball and really haven't suffered a any long slump their pitching staff won't allow that three and two Bagman steps out Pop foul, that's going to be out of play. Braves needed 65,000 to reach the million mark. Could do it, could do it tomorrow. If they have 40 plus tonight, and it looks like they do, they'd need another 25,000 tomorrow. It was a cinch if the game had been played last night to do it on this home stage. Three balls and two strikes. One out, runner second. Down low, ball four. That's the first walk by Acker. There's Keith Hernandez. Acker got him one, two, three in the first, but he's been in trouble since. He allowed a two run homer in the second. He's got runners first and second. With Hernandez at the plate and only one out. This guy's a lifetime 300 hitter. If he has one liability, it's the fact that he doesn't run well. Just a very fair runner. One ball, no strike. Strawberry on deck. You get in the middle of their lineup, you've got some problems. If there's runners out there. And with Backman and Dykstra, there always seem to be runners out there. Yeah. And the one all. That's going to be fielded. Can they get a play? Yes! Great play. Andres Thomas got the force at second base. Looked like it was going to be an infield hit. And the key on this play is the quick release by Andres Thomas. He gets to the ball okay. It was slowing down, hit off the end of the bat. You'll see a lot of shortstops not even throw on a play like this, but look how quickly he got rid of that ball. And it's there just ahead of Wally Backman. And Glenn Hubbard playing it like a first baseman, getting the big stretch. As far as Glenn Hubbard can stretch. <laughs> 
Here's Gerald Strawberry. Puppy's glad to be out there. He hasn't played for a while. Strawberry had a single of center and then stole second, later scored in the second inning in front of the homer. Fastball inside corner on one. Hernandez at first. Dykstra at third. Big spot for Acker. If he gets Strawberry, he's still in good shape. Trailing only by two. Strike. On two. He's hit the inside corner twice. Now the 2 won't be made. On the way. Curve, struck him out, beauty. Good job of pitching by Jim Acker. We go to the bottom of the third. One more look at that curveball. We go to the bottom of the third, 2 0 New York. Mention from Puerto Rico. At 24 people come over from San Juan. They watch all the games. Benedict walking toward home plate. He'll lead it off. We go to the bottom of the third, and here's Pete. Thank you, Ernie. Bruce didn't play in the first game. He's hitting 288 for the year. No homers, eight RBIs. He'll be followed by Glenn Hubbard. And then the pitcher, Jim Acker. 2-0, New York leads it. Nothing in one the count. Brave got to figure out a way to score a run against this guy. So Fernandez has now pitched 24 innings against the Braves in his career, and they've all been scoreless. Little pop right side. First baseman Hernandez might have a play. Nope, couldn't quite get to it. Got nothing in two. Braves won the opener 4 3. On a sacrifice fly by Ted Simmons in the bottom half of the ninth inning. As Paul Ossenmacher beat Roger McDowell. Here's the 0 2. Popped him up again. This one, there will be a play for Keith Hernandez. One away. They're the last three hitters that Sid Fernandez has faced. He's retired on infield pops. Here's Glenn Hubbard. Hubbard hitless in the first game, now 239 for the year. Maybe if you stay close. His only liability is he has two complete games out of 18 starts. Yeah, most of the time, Fernandez works six, seven innings, and then they turn the game over to the bullpen. Here's the 1 0 pitch, a 5 2 0. He pitched his first career shutout earlier this season against Atlanta. That was that. Night the Braves fans like to forget. I think it was 11 nothing. See, Pete, I tried to forget that. <laughs> the two and one, the count and Hubbard. Now the two one coming. Foul back. It's even two and two. Two runs, three hits for New York. No runs, one hit Atlanta. We're in the bottom half of the third. The 2-2 two is taken low in the count pool. Now 
the payoff pitch to Hubbard. Fouled away. Cincinnati's taken a 6-5 lead over Montreal now. That game goes to the ninth inning. It's in Cincinnati. Billy's still leading Houston 3-2 there in the eighth inning in Philadelphia. He's out of there. Outside corner. Third strikeout for Fernandez. Let's see. See where the mid is. Hubbard it was that close. Just caught the corner according to Moncina. So now Jim Acker steps in. Acker batting for the first time since joining Atlanta. Quite an assignment. You've been in the major leagues for about four years. You've never come to the plate before, and the first time you do, it's against one of the best pitchers in the game. Feel like you're overmatched a bit. Here's the two-strike pitch. He went right after him, didn't he? Fourth strikeout for Fernandez. And a spring now of 25 consecutive scoreless innings against Atlanta. We've played three, and the Mets lead it to nothing. Coming up after the game. Motor Week Illustrated with host Dave Despain. Top half of the fourth inning, Danny Heath, Howard Johnson, and Ed Hearn. They're up against Jim Acker, the Mets leading it 2-0. Atlanta won the opener 4-3. And Danny Heath will start it. Heath grounded out to third his first time. George Foster did play the first game, but the current plan by the Mets is to play Foster off the bench in the platoon, Danny Heap and Kevin Mitchell in left field. Because of the doubleheader tonight, Dave Johnson giving everybody a chance to start a game. But Heap is going to get a little more playing time, at least in the immediate future. One ball now strikes the count on Danny Heap. He was originally in the Houston organization and they had hopes for him that he might be what Glenn Davis is to the Astros right now. They were hoping he could come up and hit some home runs in the dome. See if Murphy can get there. He does. One down. Danny Heat doesn't have that kind of power though. He had some pretty good power figures in the minor leagues but it's a little different when you go to that Astrodome try to hit the one ball out of the ballpark. Oh, I was so wrong on that. I thought the ball in the Astrodome, like a field house, would really carry. Well, it does in other domes. Yeah. It does in Seattle. It does in Minnesota. We wonder why it doesn't carry like that in Houston. But uh, it doesn't. In fact, it's a great, great place to pitch. Well, the ball carried for Howard Johnson last time he came up. He had a two run homer over the right field fence. A ball and no strikes to count. After the homer, he was going to bunt. Johnson has seven home runs now in the season. He's gotten six of them in the last 14 games he's played it. Make it the last 15 games because he did pinch hit in the first game. One ball, one strike on Howard Johnson, who may have faced Jim Acker over in the American League when he was with Detroit and Acker was with Toronto. Trying to bunt again. And the count one and two. There's the one two. It's a curve ball. It missed low. Two and two. into shallow right center field that's going to drop for a base hit and Howard Johnson's two for two that's the fourth hit of the game for New York 
Looked like he hit it right off the end. He did just enough. Oh, pop fly single. He's at first with one down. Ed Hearn, the batter. Hearn grounded out to third his first time up. Now he knows with Gary Carter on this ball club, he's not going to play much, but I bet you he's one of the happiest guys around in that ball club. 25 years old, a career minor leaguer for a couple of organizations, getting a chance to be in the majors and doing a good job when he gets a chance to play. Runners first and second. Five hits now off Acker. Hearn, by the way, is a native of Fort Pierce, Florida. That's right down near where the Braves train, just north of West Palm Beach. Pete Scorpett was here for last night's game. I don't know if he stayed over for the doubleheader or not. Yeah, I saw him earlier. He runs our minor league spring. I, he, he runs the spring training facility, I should say, at West Palm. The batter is Rafael Santana, who fly to center his first time up. Virgil's walking down to the bullpen. They might have some action down there in a moment. The pitch misses high and tight. Left-hander Ed Olwine. If you're in trouble, you like to have the eighth and ninth hitter be the batters you have to get out, rather than the middle. Two and zero, the count on Santana. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. New York with a two nothing lead. In game two, the Braves won the first one 4 3. And the 2 0 pitch filed back to and one. Santana originally in the Yankee organization they went over the Cardinal chain for a while played briefly with St. Louis in 83 and that's acquired him in 84. They signed him as a minor leaguer he was a free agent bounce toward third Ramirez will step in the bag there gun it over to first in time to end the inning. So Acker got into and then out of trouble and the New York Mets leave a runner we go to the bottom half of the fourth it's still two nothing New York. The Goodwill Games 1986, a spectacle of majestic proportions. For 16 days in July, the best athletes in the world met head to head and created sports history. A crack television production team captured every step from starter's gun to finish line to create a video documentary of breathtaking reality and detail. You'll have a ringside seat as 3,000 Goodwill ambassadors assemble for the spectacular opening and closing ceremonies. The best versus the best. The rematch you've been waiting 10 years to see is now an exciting home video cassette. The greatest moments of the Goodwill Games, available on VHS or Beta Cassette, a Turner Home Entertainment presentation. To order your VHS or Beta tape, phone toll-free 1-800-257-1234. Use your credit card or send $29.95 plus $3 postage and handling to Games of 86, Post Office Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. No CODs, please. Bottom half of the fourth inning about to begin. Billy Sample, Rafael Ramirez, and Dale Murphy. New up against Sid Fernandez. It's 2-0 New York. And as we begin the bottom half of the fourth, we want to congratulate Arthur and Karen Sando, Art's the Vice President of Public Relations for Turner Broadcasting. Congratulations to the Sandos on the birth of their second child last night, Michael O'Keefe Sando. Eight pounds, eight and a half ounces. All right. And Michael O'Keefe Sando would love to see the Braves get something going here against Sid Fernandez. Billy Sample has the only hit off Fernandez in the game. He went off the first inning with a single to center. Here's the one strike delivery and there's that off speed breaking ball for a call strike nothing and two Philadelphia takes that three two lead over Houston into the ninth inning now at Philadelphia here's
Here's the 0-2 to Sample. Second baseman Wally Backman. One down. Now Ramirez, who struck out his first time up. If anybody is due to break out of a slump, it's this guy. Raphael's been in a lengthy, lengthy slump. And he's followed a pattern that he's had the last two years. The mm -hmm. second half has not been good for Raphael Ramirez. And he started to go on that high fastball, and he went. Played umpire Larry Poncino makes the call, 0-1. Ramirez hitless now in his last 11 at bats, only four hits in his last 41 at bats. Right to the shortstop. He's done a little bit of that lately, too. He's hit some line drives right at people. And that doesn't do a whole lot for your confidence when you're not hitting the ball. So two away quickly in the bottom of the fourth. Now Murphy went into a 6-4, three-double play in the first. Be a very easy inning for Sid Fernandez. Howard Johnson's throw on to Hernandez, and it's a one, two, three, bottom of the fourth. 26 straight scoreless innings against the Braves now for Fernandez, and after four, it's two nothing, New York. Top half of the fifth inning, pitcher Sid Fernandez will lead it off against Jim Acker, then back to the top of the order, Glenn Baxter, Wally Backman. A reminder tomorrow, we have the final game in this series for you. It begins at 2.05 Eastern Time. Rick Aguilera against Rick Mailer. And the Braves go on the road. The Braves will go to Houston, San Francisco, and San Diego before returning home. And when the Braves do return home, it's a nice long homestand. It begins August 8th. Three games with the Giants, four with San Diego, and three with Houston. Fernandez grounded to second his first time up. He doesn't take too bad a swing for a pitcher. No, sir. Hit the ball hard last time up. Got two extra base hits this year, both doubles. He might have another one. Headed toward the left field corner. Griffey up with it quickly. Fernandez is going to go back to first. He was thinking about heading down a second, but he changed his mind. Six hits now off Acker. Let's take another look. Just there. Harper over quickly. Knocked it down, and they respect his arm. A runner at first and nobody out. Glenn Dykstra has fly to right and single in this game. In the first game, Dykstra appeared as a pinch hitter and doubled off the left field wall. going one. Dykstra very active in that batter's box. He doesn't really stand too still. At times you'll see him almost run up in the batter's box it appears when he tries to slap that ball by the third baseman who always plays in on him because of his bunting ability. One and one to count. Bud Harrelson. Giving the signs. One on the way. Dykstra fouls this one out of play. A ball and two strikes.
Nobody out. Fernandez at first. They aren't holding him. And the count full now on Dykstra. They're looking over to see whether they'll let Fernandez run on a 3-2 and nobody out. You wouldn't think so, but uh, Davey Johnson doesn't always go by the book. Ed Olwine getting up again in the Atlanta bullpen. See what they do here with the pitcher aboard. Nobody out. He is going, and the 3-2 is grounded toward second. Hubbard to short in time. One, no, safe at second. They got him at first, but Sid Fernandez beat the raft down at second. We're going to get an argument. Jim Hacker going over there. Andres Thomas complaining. So is Glenn Hubbard. And here comes Chuck Tanner. From here, it looked like he was out at second. And I guess it did from the dugout, too. But Joe West called him safe at second base. Dykstra retired at first and goes 4-6-3. The runner, Fernandez, was going, and Hubbard took a chance to try to get the double play. They still managed to get one. We're going to look at it again, and you'll be the judge. The runner was going, Hubbard to Thomas. Thomas never got the bag. Joe West made the right call. If we see that again, you'll see that Andres Thomas was late getting to the bag. He was straddling the bag, and he kicked it a little late. Well, we'll look again. Uh, Fernandez never seemed to get to the bag either. Let's see. He might not have. He might not have touched the bag until the second go at it. And uh, if that's the case, Joe West was right. So the runner, Fernandez, is at second base with one man out and Wally Backman, the hitter. Backman has grounded out to second and walked. It appeared that Thomas was standing behind the bag, and then when he caught it, he was going to tap the bag, but by that time, Fernandez had his foot in there. So, looked like a correct call by West. Acker delivers to Backman. It's low and inside. We're going to take one more look. See where his foot is? Now he brings his foot in, but by that time, Fernandez has his foot on there. Mm -hmm. So the replay shows the call was the right one. Here's the 1-0 pitch. One ball, one strike. One man out. We're in the top of the fifth inning of game two, and New York leads it 2-0. care for that call. I don't blame him. I thought it was low. Let's look at this breaking ball. Oh my. <laughs> well the replay shows that call was not the correct one. More times than not though those replays will uphold the umpire's yeah. call. Here's the one two bouncing ball. It's going to get through into right field. They're going to wave him. They're going to try it. Up with the ball is Billy Sample. Here comes the throw home. It won't get there in time. And Sid Fernandez has scored to make it a three nothing ball game. It's a base hit for Wally Backman. He takes second on the throw and he drives in his 18th run of the year. Seven hits now for the Mets. Okay, failure of Thomas to have his foot on the bag on that double play is cost the Braves. The single right scores Fernandez as he comes around. He's a big guy and he runs pretty well. And now Billy Williams. Big argument out there. Looks like Thomas has been thrown out of the game by Joe West. I think he has been. Williams signaled to Tanner who's coming out. Now Chuck is furious. He is furious. Two. 
West is laughing and Tanner throws his hat. Look at West. I know what happened after the base hit. Thomas got back on the umpire saying that he should have been called Fernandez out. The double play should have been made. They threw out Thomas. They threw out, thrown out Tanner. Mets lead at 3-0. Tanner backing up his players. And we'll have a new shortstop. First time this year for Andres Thomas. First time this year for Chuck Tanner. But Thomas must have been continuing to complain to Joe West about the call made earlier. I'm sure he did. And that got him tossed out of there. And then Chuck Tanner went wild. Ken Obergfell is going to move into third base. Rafael Ramirez will take over at shortstop. And Chuck Tanner will turn the game over probably to Bob Skinner. Who works with Chuck in the Braves dugout. batting in the number six spot on the batting order. Move Ramirez over to short. Bob Skinner will manage the Braves the rest of the way in game two. The batter is Keith Hernandez who has grounded out to second and hit into a 6-4 force play. You don't like the odds when he steps in. He's hitless in this twin bill so far. He was 0 for 4 in the first game, 0 for 2 in the nightcap so far. Chuck hasn't left yet. That's what the holdup is. Now he has. And Hernandez steps in. 3 0 New York with one man out. One ball, no strikes the count. the count of ball on a strike. Here's the one one. Two and one. Two-one delivery, fly ball, deep center field. Murphy will have room. Holding at second is Wally Backman. Two men out, and that'll bring up Daryl Strawberry, who had a single, stole a base, and scored on Howard Johnson's home run in the second. He struck out in the third. I'd put him on. I like to manage right here. I'm going to put him on and pitch the heat. Three runs, seven hits for New York. No runs, just one hit for Atlanta. Braves having their problems with Sid Fernandez again. They're not going to put him up. Well, I've been a terrible manager tonight again. The ball and no strikes the count in Strawberry. Strawberry really seems to like the low pitch. We've seen him go down and get low fastballs, especially, and drive them out of the ballpark. Hacker ready for his 1-0. Curve caught the outside corner. That evens the count on Strawberry. Kept the fastball up 
up on him, and he's ahead in the count now, one and two. Struck him out last time on a breaking ball. Strawberry single the first time. Two outs in the inning. Backman down at second. Two and two. Same pitch, that off speed breaking ball. But it slipped on Acker, and the count full now, three and two on Strawberry. He's got a straight change that he throws up once in a while. I don't I don't think it's a slip pitch. I think it's a straight change. Up. Here's the payoff pitch. And he walked him. Walk number two issued by Jim Acker. Runners at first and second. Danny Heap will step in. Heap is rounded out and flat out. Left-hander Ed Olwine ready if needed in the Braves bullpen. beat Houston 3-2 and Cincinnati defeated Montreal 7-6 so even though the Mets lost the first game of this doubleheader they could still gain ground in the National League East if they win this game they'll pick up a half game on the Expos they began the night 15 games ahead of them Pitch to Heat. Reno. Howard Johnson on deck. They started 15 games in front, but 60 <laughs> in the lost <Lots> column. <laughs> what a year they're having. They have won 63 games and lost now 29 after losing the first one here. They uh, play like they did in the first half, the second half. They're going to win about 112 ball games. They could set an all time one loss record. Strike three and one. Davey Johnson insists that he will not relax until the deed has been done and the East has been won, but I think he's got to be feeling pretty good about things right about now. Not supposed to relax until about Wednesday. <laughs> Second baseman Glenn Hubbard with a nice play. And Acker out of further trouble here in the fifth inning. One run, two hits, two left. We go to the bottom half of the fifth. It's now New York three, Atlanta nothing. We have played four and a half innings of game two. Braves won the first game four three, scoring a run in the bottom of the ninth. There are the, the totals in the first half of this ball game. Three seven and zero for the Mets. Acker has been in and out of trouble for the whole game. And Sid Fernandez, he has been fabulous. Marvelous. And Sid Fernandez against the Braves has been almost unscorable this year and last year as well. Braves had a leadoff single from Billy Sample in the top of the first or bottom of the first, and he was erasing a double play. No one else has been on. Very similar to game one. Ted Simmons will lead it off, and there's a base hit just past the glove of Howard Johnson. The Braves get their second hit and second base runner. Down three nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. Skip Carey, John Sterling with you now. On Braves television as you see that bouncing ball just go past Johnson's glove. But 
For those who did not see the first game, it's almost the same scenario. Dwight Gooden retired 12 in a row to open the game. He had a 2 0 lead on a two run home run by Mookie Wilson. And the Braves scored three runs in the bottom of the fifth. Mets later tied him, and the Braves scored the winner in the bottom of the ninth. Well, we learned one thing tonight, didn't we? Andres Thomas English is improving. <laughs> Joe West understood him, yes. <laughs> Terry Harper takes that rising fastball ball one. Or Joe West understands Spanish. <laughs> that would be unfair. That would be, yeah. Uh, it's a great line, I'll tell you, by Ely Nastasi's ex-wife. That pitch is pop foul back here. Skip is up and he didn't catch it. It went in and out of the booth. And broke that telephone. Nikki Nichols had a chance. Skip Carey had a chance. And it rolled away. How do you like that? That's baseball. And show business all in one. Does the phone work? It'll be a 1 1 to Harper. There's a base hit center field in front of Dykstra, and the Braves have two on and no one out. They keep hitting them back here. We're going to have to get somebody from the Sheriff's Department to come up here and protect us. He went down and got a low pitch. Uh, Richard Kroger is not here. Nikki Nichols is. And Nikki, you have to catch that for us. That's part of your job. Well, maybe we'll just bring Kroger back just to use his body to block those. <laughs> Well, let's win the game now. Three nothing Mets bottom of the fifth. Braves have their first rally. Here's kind of an odd thing. Overtfell is up and Keith Hernandez is playing bunt. Braves down by three runs. Overtfell has hit left handers very well this year. He's just sitting out the nightcap. He's pressing the duty when Andres Thomas got thrown out. Obi not bunting in the count 0 and 2. Are we talking about it? Thomas getting thrown. Ely Nastasi is a linguist. He can speak four, five, six languages. And his wife once said to him, Why is it when you're cursing the umpires, you curse them in English, the only language that they can understand? <laughs> Why don't you use one of your many other languages? It'll be an O2. The curveball swatted down the right field line. Beats it. And it means a run. Around third, Simmons. He scores. Harper goes to third. It's a 3-1 ball game. And the scenario between the first game and the second game are startlingly similar. Also, you never know what's going to happen, but I wonder what Andres Thomas would have done in that spot. He might have hit into a double play. Baseball is a very funny game. Oberfell reached out and got the breaking ball and dropped it into right field. So the tying runs are aboard. No activity in the bullpen yet for the Mets, but they begin to move around on that. Now here's Bruce Benedict, who handles the bat very well. And the Braves could very well bunt. Glenn Hubbard is up next. And then the Braves could pinch hit for Acker and go to the bullpen. I'm saying they could. We'll see what Chuck Chatter, who has been thrown out, and his lieutenants, Bob Skinner and Al Munchak, will do, and Willie Stargell. Well, he's not butting, at least on the first pitch, and takes it upstairs. In the first game, the Braves trailed 2 0. Gooden had retired 12 in a row, and the Braves broke loose against Dwight for three runs in the fifth. Here they trailed 3 0, had only one man on in four innings, and have broken through for a run, first and third, no one out. And 2 0 on Benedict. The Braves again get Ed Olwine up in their bullpen. The RBI for Ken Obergfell gives him a career high. Now has 36. He's had a really good year. The slider was inside, and the count goes to three and zero. Oh. And one more bad one. The Braves would have him loaded up with no one out. I want to take back what I said? His major league high was 46, not 36. But he's only 10 away with that RBI. Had that with the Cardinals. That high ball four, they're loaded up.
Well, the Braves, who've had an almost impossible time scoring against Sid Fernandez the past couple years, have a great opportunity. They have one run in, bases loaded, and no one out. And if if uh, Ernie and Pete did not tell you, they didn't have time to tell you, Houston already has been beaten. Now, the Braves, if they won a doubleheader, would close to within eight games and seven on the law side. Here's Glenn Hubbard. Acker comes out on deck. But that's not set in stone, certainly. Foul back on a low fastball. On the doubleheader, Hubby is over three. Braves have Harper at third. Obert fell at second, Benedict at first. That's a fair ball. It's a fair ball. Harper scores. Obertfell scores. It's tied up. Around third is Benedict. He scores a three-run double. The Braves lead it 4-3. Begins to throw. Acker will hit for himself. Boy, I mean, how could you ever get two games following the same script as closely as the first game tonight and the second game? It's that is mind-boggling. And the Braves have not gotten a loud foul off Fernandez in two years, and they break loose here with four runs. A single by Simmons, a single by Harper, a single by Obertfell. A walk to Benedict and a three-run double by that fella, Glenn Hubbard. The Braves have scored four runs, and Jim Acker is going to hit for himself. And you've got a scoop if he's not sacrificing. This ball is just fair. Tell you what, John, it could be that Acker is going to come out of the game anyway. But rather than waste a right. player, they want to bunt here. We'll just have to wait and see. Keith Hernandez creeping in from first. The bunt attempt is back to the mound. They're going to go to third, and they've got him. Howard Johnson throws it away. Hubbard goes to third. Acker goes to second. The Braves still have no one out. Howard Johnson ran him back too far. And I'll tell you one more thing. I bet, Skip, that Hubbard would be safe because of a collision in the base pass, interference by either Santana or Wally Backman. Joe West made that call, but then as no one was retired, he quickly reversed it, and he did the right thing. A big break for Atlanta there. The bunt was too hard, and good job of base running by Hubbard. He didn't run into the, into the certain out. So Fernandez did his job. He got off the mound. And here's the problem, and it's really not Johnson's fault. Santana thought somebody else was at second base. But Backman, of course, was not. He was covering first. Of course. That's right. Backman's covering first. Santana was hung up. And when Santana made contact without the ball on Hubbard, Hubbard was going to be safe. But the runners are now at second and third. And how could Sid Fernandez lose it that quickly after being not, not good against the Braves? He had been unhittable in just about every start that he's ever faced the Braves. Fernandez has been knocked out. Doug Sisk will come in from the bullpen. There's Fernandez leaving. The Braves down 3-0 have scored four, and they have second and third and no one out as Fernandez leaves. There's Dick Sisk, and we'll see what Sisk does when we return after this. I guess that's really the beauty of baseball. It's such an improbable sport where you 
in football hockey or basketball you can kind of gauge what is happening in rhythm not in baseball for some reason. Here's Sid Fernandez. I mean, he has been unhittable against the Braves, and not just this year, going back to last year. He has a 3 0 lead. They go to the bottom of the fifth, and in the bottom of the fifth, Ted Simmons stroked a single between third and short. Terry Harper dropped a single into short center field. Ken Overfell singled down the right field line for a run. Bruce Benedict walked to load the bases. Glenn Hubbard whistled a double just inside the third baseline down the left field corner, scoring all three runs and made it 4 3 Braves and then Acker trying to sacrifice and the ball was thrown away trying to get Hubbard in a rundown between third and second and the Braves have second and third no one out that scored by the way a fielder's choice and E5 yeah it scored an error on Howard Johnson and I guess that's what you have to do because he threw the ball but the air was really that of the shortstop Rafael Santana sure he should have been at second he was in the base pass and the two Braves runners would have been safe anyway. Well, the Braves have a big chance. They lead 4-3. Doug Sis comes out of the Mets bullpen. And here's the top of the order in Billy Sample. And that is foul down the right field line. Sisk throws hard. He throws a very hard sinker. And his problem in his career has been wildness. He has been up and down between the Mets and Tidewater this year. There is still no one out here in the bottom of the fifth. And the count one and one. Our scoreboard has one and oh, but he did foul that ball off. <laughs> Plus, I've seen too many foul balls in my time, which is possible. There's a strike one and two. Braves have Hubbard at third, and that's pitcher Jim Acker at second base. And Acker would be in line for the win. He has battled in and out of trouble for the whole game. I don't know if we flashed it. I was not looking. Sisk is two and one, an ERA of 3.38. This is his 18th game, all in relief. He's given up 34 hits in 29 innings. Howard Johnson will make the play. One away, and the runners stay put. That's what Sisk will do if he's right. He'll get a lot of ground balls. Now here is Ramirez who began the game at third and moved to short when Thomas was thrown out. Chuck Tanner thrown out as well in the top half of the inning. The, the Braves, a team that's lost 14 out of 16. And they're four innings away from beating, or at least... Winning two games started by Gooden and Sid Fernandez. That's amazing, too. Wally Backman comes to the plate, and it's in time. Ed Hearn had the plate blocked off, and a nice play by the catcher, Ed Hearn. Tell you, that's how these Mets play. They're a bunch of gamers, boy. They stick their nose in there. Hearn had to take some punishment here, but he was willing to do so. Look how he had it blocked. Hubbard had no chance. Jim Acker stayed at second base, so the Braves have now two on and two out, but the two on are at first and second, and so you've got to give Doug Sisk some credit. He came in to throw ground balls, and he got two straight ground balls. And here's Murph. Murph, the ninth hitter to face Mets pitching in this inning. That's down low. Ted Simmons, who began it, is on deck. The inexperience of Acker as a base runner showed there. He's got to watch the man at third. If he takes off, you've got to go too. But this guy is so overdue. July 1st is the last home run. It's really hurt the Braves. Braves, you hear a lot of raps about their pitching, but you play in a small ballpark like this, you've got to score some runs, and the Braves really haven't scored a lot. There's that good sinker, one and one. Houston has been beaten. San Diego's been beaten. Los Angeles has been beaten. The two Western winners, San Francisco and Cincinnati tonight. 
That is a very big game for the Braves and they have a lead halfway through. A very tenuous lead for three. A two and one. Big whip. Starting pitcher Jim Acker at second base and Ramirez at first. Braves have scored four times in the fifth to take a 4 3 lead. They've scored three times in the fifth inning of the first game to take a 3 2 lead. Struck came out, good sinker. So the Braves did not take full advantage, but they do score four runs. They score four runs on four hits, one error, and not figure in the scoring, and two left. At the end of five innings of play now, the Braves four, and the Mets three. Hi, I'm Dale Murphy. I want to tell you about two exciting ways to identify with your Atlanta Braves. It's the Braves Clubhouse Collection Catalog and the Braves Clubhouse Store. With the Braves Clubhouse Collection Catalog, you can order t-shirts and sports shirts in many different styles. You can purchase official jerseys, jackets, and caps, as well as replica apparel. We also offer bats, balls, pennants, and a big selection of gift and novelty items. To order your catalog today, send your name, address, and $1 to Braves Catalog, P.O. Box 4006, Atlanta, Georgia, 30302. You'll receive a coupon worth $1 towards your first purchase. And in Atlanta, you can shop in person for Braves apparel, novelties, and tickets at the Braves Clubhouse store located in the Omni International. From the youngest fan to the adult, men and women, we have what you want in the Braves Clubhouse collection. And you know it's official because you've purchased directly from the Atlanta Braves. Braves versus Mets, 2.05 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Well, that'll be tomorrow, and Rick Aguilera will pitch for the Mets, and Rick Mailer will go for the Braves. This is game two of the doubleheader. The Braves won the first game by that score of four to three. A huge house having a, a high old time. This could be a vital doubleheader for the Braves, and I really do mean that. You know how poorly the Braves have been playing. As far as the Mets are concerned, <laughs> they're in pretty good shape. They lead by 15 games over Montreal. The Braves, with the doubleheader, should they win it with Houston losing would move to eight games and only seven on the loss side so and you know the Braves next opponent will be Houston in Houston and Houston will be back here in a couple of weeks but a long way to go Jim Acker has been in and out of trouble you can admire his grit he's had a lot of problems giving up seven hits in the first five innings Howard Johnson two for two a two run home run then he dropped a single in the center field. Skip Carey, John Sterling with you from Hot Atlanta. And it has been a just that. Johnson, then Ed Hearn and Rafael Santana here on the six. Braves would love to get another inning out of Acker and then perhaps go to Deadman and Garber and Ossenbacher for the final three. Some group of those three. The Mets start warm up activity in their book. Just in case. That's uh, rookie Rick Anderson warming up. Glenn Hubbard gets the scoop, throws him out, one away. Rick Anderson has been in the minor leagues for eight or nine years. He was called up by the Mets to pitch a game. He pitched brilliantly. He didn't get credit for the win because the Mets didn't score enough runs. Then he went right back down to time but now he's been called up. He and a left-handed Randy Myers were called up. Now 
Now Jeff Dedman joins Ed Olwan of the Braves bullpen. One away, and here's the catcher, Ed Hearn. He's a pretty good looking prospect. He catches, you know, maybe once a week behind Gary Carter, but he's hitting 327, three homers and six RBIs. Fouls this one back and over our heads and out of the booth. In this area of the ballpark, I've noticed a lot of bad hands. A lot of them in this booth, by the way. Well, it's women's lib, right? That's right. Nikki should have caught it. Jump it's, over it's, there. It was in her. It's zone. her fault. And better than that, she does not have a microphone to answer back. Of course. There's strike two. Hearn's been up 49 times. His 50th major league at bat, three homers, six RBIs, not too bad, and hitting 327. Hit hard, scooped up beautifully by Overtfeld. There is a man who has good hands, soft hands, Ken Overtfeld. That's a tough play because it's a little bit in between hops. If it's a short hop, it's really an easier play than one like this. He made it. Notice how he kept his head down and kept his concentration. That's not so hard to do because you don't know exactly how far up that ball is going to come. And this uh, infield, probably because of the, the Georgia sun baking it, it can be a very tough infield, very hard infield. Wait till after the football season starts and they have the wrestling matches out here, too. And it's a dug up infield. Two way here's Santana, and he takes a strike. Bray is very fortunate. Sam Newper and his ground crew do a heck of a job, but it's very tough when you have the kind of sun and activity that this ballpark has. It should be a one, two, three inning. Ramirez. It's just that. We have played five and a half in Atlanta. The Braves lead it 4-3. Sixth thing, I don't know if you can hear the noises in this ballpark, but they're very scary. <laughs> Braves have a 4-3 lead, 4-5 and 0 for Atlanta, 3-7 and 1 for the Mets in the second game of the doubleheader. The Braves won the first game by the same score. Wasn't that soon from Larry Blues, Rhythm and Blues album? Something like that, yes. Or maybe it's his other album, The Birth of the Balloons. Ted Simmons leads off the bottom of the sixth. He led off the bottom of the fifth, got the base hit, and that was the catalyst for the Braves' four-run rally. Doug Sisk in relief of Sid Fernandez. It probably will be Sisk's last inning, probably, because he's due to lead off for the Mets in the seventh. Tell you what, boy, he did a big job of pitching for him an inning ago. Second and third, nobody out, no more runs scored. A base hit or even the proper fly ball, and the Braves would have a two or three-run lead. Down low, two and oh. Simmons, the number four in there, so it's Simmons, Harper, and Ken Overfell here in the Brave Six. Oh, there's a base hit by Simmons. Simmons won the first game with a sacrifice line drive to knock in the winning run tonight. He started the big rally for the Braves last inning, now has a base hit here. That's the one thing about Ted Simmons. He can just simply flat out hit and will be able to do that for years. I think he'll be with the Braves for quite a while. I just made an announcement about Zane Smith and Craig McMurtry, which really doesn't tell us any more than we already know, except it's an inflammation of the sheath around the tendon in the middle finger of their respective pitching hands, and it's day to day. And for the very sake, hopefully, we'll be there. We're getting the pitching shorts. Here's Harper, who followed Simmons hit with a hit of his own last inning and later scored. I don't even know tendons had sheets. Did you? I've not looked inside <laughs> lately, no. One and one, but if Dave Persley says so, I'll follow along like the rest of the other sheep. Doubleheaders do that to
big crowd here. And a very nice looking one, too. Simmons leaves at first, not being held on the 2 1. That's that sinker. It looks good when it approaches the plate and then dies. On the count, two and two. We'll have our red man scoreboard coming up in an inning or so. But I'll give you an idea what the scores look like. Now Harper laid off that pitch, which came up too low, so the count goes full three and two. Now, Braves have a decision whether to start Simmons, who's very slow. If Harper strikes out, it'll be a strike him out, throw him out, double play. But if he hits a ground ball, the Braves could stay out of the double play. And this time, Hernandez is playing in front of Simmons to try to give him a little trouble. He stays put and the pitch is outside ball four and the Braves have two on and no one out. And the Braves could go a long way toward winning this doubleheader if they're able to get the big hit now. Wilbert fell up with runners at first and second nobody out. He was up in a similar spot an inning ago swung away and got a base hit. But at that time the Braves trailed three nothing. Now they lead four three. Let's see how they play at the lower end of the batting order. Benedict and then Hubbard follow Obi. Simmons at second base of course does not have good speed. Harper does at first. And Sisk down low ball one. Gave no indication of bunting. Braves won the first 4-3, lead 4-3 in the second, bottom of the sixth, and 2-0 and oh on overcome. That has been the bugaboo for Sisk in his career. He has streaks of wildness, because he has good stuff. Strange game. He came in and pitched sensationally to get out of somebody else's trouble an inning ago, and now here he is getting into his own mess. You see Davey Johnson in front of him. That's Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, former great Yankee pitcher. It'll be 2 and 0 on Obi. There's a strike. Now Obergfell again looks down at his third base coach Russ Nixon. The Mets are not playing but not at all. A fly ball not deep enough to tag up on. Simmons just loves and Dykstra fires it. Cut off by Santana. So two on and one out now Bruce Bennett. First and third out. Glenn Hubbard, the hero of the moment, he hit that three run double last inning to bring the Braves from a 3 1 deficit to a 4 3 lead. Chop and a base hit left field. That infield is hard, it's rock hard. 
No rain and that Georgia Sun baking it and that ball bounced over the head. And the Braves take a 5-3 lead. Simmons scores from third. Uh, the base hit off the bat of Hubby is fourth RBI. Sis got him to do what he wanted to do. Hit it on the ground, but Johnson leaped as high as he could and just got over the glove. And here's Ken Griffey to bat for Jim Acker. And let me tell you something, Acker, as John said, a quality start for him. Six innings, three runs. A lot of pitches, but he... He battled the Mets on better than even turn. He really did battle. And that's really how he got through this ball game. He gave up one big hit, the two-run home run to Howard Johnson in the second. But after that, that disputed play at second, he might not have given up another run. Though the Braves lead at 5-3. Benedict at second, Hubbard at first two outs. And here's Griff. There's a fast strike on the inside. This really has good stuff. He has good arm. In the first game of the doubleheader, Griffey has been playing very well for the Braves. Was two for four, two doubles, and he scored two runs. He had a big double in that Braves explosion against Gooden in the fifth. It's a base hit. It went past Hernandez's glove. Around third, Benedict scores. The throw home is not in time. And the Braves lead it six to three. And about 99 times out of 100, Keith Hernandez picks that ground ball. Wait and see how they score it. It's sharply hit. Hernandez moves to his right and just simply didn't get the glove down there. Another angle. It went right under his glove. He expected the ball to come up. It did not. Oh, Ken Grivy gets an RBI pinch hit base hit. They call it a base hit, and I scored it as such because Hernandez did not touch it, but he should have had that, and he knows it. Oh, the Braves now have a 6-3 lead, and Omar Marino comes out of the dugout to pinch hit for Billy Sapp in a, in a lefty-righty switch. And I'll tell you something that the Braves have done. Chuck Tanner probably managing from the runway. Bob Skinner, the nominal manager at this point but the Braves are getting their left hand hitters in with a chance to do something productive before the Mets bring in Jesse Orozco out of the bullpen so Marino will come up with first and third two out and base it means another run Braves lead at 6 3 now Atlanta can really see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel I mean, the Braves have lost 14 out of 16 and this could be their biggest doubleheader sweep of the year bar none Houston has already lost That's why baseball managers, Chuck Tanner, great example, just laugh at people if they say, well, it's all over. Well, it's not all over because the Braves and the rest of their Western brethren have 65, 68 games to play. But right, here's Marino with two on and two out. Braves getting some very timely two out hits. And Skip, isn't it amazing? You get the timely two out hits and you win games. You don't, you lose games. That's the way it works. As a pinch hitter, Omar 5 for 14. He played in the first game. Hubbard at third, Griffey at first. Base hit right field. And the Braves lead it 7 to 3. How do you like that? The Braves score four in the fifth, three in the sixth. They take a 7 to 3 lead. And in this fortnight of trouble, a little ray of sunshine for the Braves. Unless that was a rhetorical question, I like that a lot. <laughs> I figured you and Braves fans would. 7 3 Atlanta, two outs, and here is Ramirez. And back to back pinch hit base hits by Griffey and Marino. And a strike. Anderson up again in their bullpen. It'll be Ed Olwine for the Braves in the seventh. Acker, of course, has been pinch hit, and no one's up in the bullpen. The 0-1. One. one and one. You know, if you could predict, it, I love uh, Skip and I have talked about this often on the air in all sports, but people who predict games, how could you predict the Braves would do that to Sid Fernandez? They hadn't gotten a loud foul off him in two years. Chop to third. Howard Johnson fires in time. The Braves come up with 
three more runs. Listen to the hand the Braves get. They get three runs on four hits and leave two. And now at the end of six innings of play, the score, the Braves seven and the Mets three. And the new pitcher for the Braves, left-hander Ed Olwan. And Olwan will face certainly a pinch hitter for Doug Sis. And then he'll face a lot of left-hand hitters. Although the Mets have a couple of switch hitters in there, but the first six hitters bat from the left side, and those who switch in are much better lefty hitters. So the Braves hoping that Olwan can carry the ball for an inning or two, and then maybe Gene Garber would come in to finish up. Ray Knight will. Well, oh, there's Ray. He'll come out of the dugout and pinch hit for Sis. The Braves scoring four in the fifth and three in the sixth. Lead at 7-3 and trying for the doubleheader sweep. Through six, the Mets three runs, seven hits, and one error. And for the Braves, seven runs, nine hits, and no errors. Braves won the first game 4-3. They're within nine outs of the doubleheader sweep. Well, we go to the top half of the seventh. 7-3 seven, Braves and carry along. Here's Skip. Okay, John, thank you. Knight was 0-2 for 2 in the first game. He has nine homers, 45 RBI. to go to work. Popped him up. Foul territory. Everybody chasing it. Is there a play? Simmons near the dugout. Missed it. No error will be charged. He took one look too many, I guess, at that railing, and then when they looked up, it was too late. So Knight gets a swing on the house hit. game Paul Ossenmacher and Gene Garber the ace of the Atlanta bullpen are heating up now 0 and 1 the count to Ray Knight 7 3 our score Braves on top fastball hit to deep short Ramirez falls down throws it'll be what are they going to call it safe Ramirez had him if he keeps his feet that was not a real great at bat for Atlanta. No, because you have to retire a guy as good as Ray Knight, and the Braves gave him a couple of chances. Rafi just stumbled. As Skip said, he holds on. Ray Knight can't run a lick anymore, and Rafi has a strong arm, so they gave the Mets an out. Pretty close play at first base, too. There's that bullpen activity we told you about. Rick Anderson still throwing for the Mets. And Len Dykstra will be the batter. Hit off the end of the bat, did not travel far, and Harper had a stop. Tim Tuffle will come on now to hit for Wally Bachman. Tuffle played in the first game and was 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. So the Mets. Well, you don't get to the point where you're 63 and 29 without doing this. Down four comes storming right back. Though, in honesty, compels you to say that Old Wine should have two out, nobody on base. Lightning beginning to. I'm not even going to talk about it. If it happens, it happens. There's tough. Two on, nobody out. The right hand hitter waits. It's hitting 245. Curve just a little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. United second, Dykstra at first. 
There's nobody out in the seventh. Just missed. Two and oh. Thunder rumbles in the distance as well. Well, if it's got to rain, you prefer it to be when you're up for in the seventh inning. The two on pitch. Here it is. Low ball three. Hernandez, Strawberry, and Heap are the next three scheduled hitters. They have Gary Carter and Kevin Mitchell and Mookie Wilson and George Foster on the bench. And the three out of Tuffle. At the knees, three and one. The runners lead. Nobody out here in the seventh inning. Or even a nine. Braves lead seven three. Double play ball. Six, four, three. Did that help? Knight is at third with two out. Now here's a great recovery from Ed Olwan, the rookie left-hander. Three and oh, three and one, and gets the hard ground ball. And Hubbard got rid of the ball beautifully. Dykstra tried to take him out, but an easy double play. Well, I give a little credit to Ed Olan. He's done a very good job for the Braves since coming in as a kind of a middle inning relief pitcher, especially against lefties in the past couple of months. Here's Keith Hernandez, who's 0 for 7 on the night. Well, that doesn't happen often. Olan will try to make it 0 for 8. He should have been out of the inning. 1, 2, 3. A little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. Bobby Dews, who works in the Braves minor league organization, his first deal was to bring that old line to the organization, and here he is making a major league contribution. Hernandez at 285 now. Came into the night at 290. Oh, what a cut he had at a fastball, but he fouled it off, and it's one and one. Third and two out, and the Braves on top, seven three. This doubleheader, if they can hang on and win it, we'll get the monkey of the horrible slump off their back. You beat the best team in the league twice in one night. Uh, figure you're not going to go undefeated the rest of the way, but you're back on track. The one one from Ed Olaf, and here it is. High and tight with a fastball, two balls, one strike. We never have had the attendance figures announced here, but it was a big mob. The two one pitch. High ball three. Three bombs and a strike. Daryl Stromberry is on deck. He does not fare well against left-handers ordinarily. There's a drive. Deep right field. You knew you weren't going to keep Hernandez quiet all night long. Into the blue seats and it's seven to five. Storming back, they're within two. And here comes Bob Skinner. And here's the pitch from Ed Olwan. It was a 3 1 pitch. He threw a fastball up, and boy, did Hernandez ever get that uppercut swing. Hernandez, when he wants to, can hit for power, and he just wanted to. He had the right pitch. 
Bob Skinner is going to bring in a lefty. We're going to bring in Paul Ossenmacher, who was in the first game and pitched very well. Darryl Strawberry, he was the hitter, so Ossenmacher will come out of the pen. The Braves leading it by 2 7 5. We'll see how Ossenmacher fares after this. Pitt struck out to one run scored against them. Braves will be happy to have the same kind of performance in here. They'll face Darryl Strawberry. With two out, nobody on. Again, O line gave up the three hits and the two runs, and the ball Hernandez hit was absolutely fresh. But with any luck at all from his defense, he's out of the inning. One, two, three. So that's not a whole lot of margin for error in this business. Strawberry did not play in the first game. He's one for two with a walk, a stolen base, and a run scored in this one. He's third in the league in slugging percentage, eighth in on base percentage, ninth in RBIs. Has 10 game winning RBIs as well. So this young man really getting it together. Austin Monker completes his warm up toss. Strawberry stands in there. Seven five Atlanta our score. Lawson Locker ready to go to work. Strawberry had a good cut at that one. Well, in their half of the seventh, the Braves will send Murphy, Simmons, and Harper to the plate. The pitch to Strawberry fouled away again. It's 0 2. All line went two thirds of an inning, three hits, two runs, one homer. Sidearm curve missed outside. Ball and two strikes. Young Matthew Dye, six years old, out of the ballpark tonight with his dad Mitch. A one-two. Got him curveball. Hassenmacher comes on to get Strawberry. But two run score on three hits, no errors. Nobody left. Bottom half of the seventh inning with your score. Brave seven, that's five. Second base, Rick Anderson is on to pitch. Anderson is yet to allow an earned run. This is his fourth appearance. He's gone 11 and a third innings, seven hits, one unearned run, walked five, struck out the same number. He was seven and two at Tidewater. That was a starter there much of the time. Had eight starts, one complete game out of 22 appearances. He's six feet, 175 pounds out of Everett, Washington. He'll face Murphy, Simmons, and Harper here in the bottom of the seventh. And his first pitch is a fastball outside. One ball, no strike. Murph is hitless, 0 for 3. Count goes to 1 and 1. Two strikes. The count. Well, earlier we told you we were going to have Motor Week Illustrated after the game. Now we're not. So we lied. What can we tell you? The one-two to Murphy. Bounce to short. Santana came up on him. It'll be a boot. I guess. Yes. Well, if it's not, yes, it is. Santana just got handcuffed by it and dropped it, so the Braves get a break. 
a 7 5 lead, none too safe. The Thunder and Lightning are still thundering and lightning. -ing. Here's Simmons, two out of three. Won the first game on a line drive sacrifice fly in the bottom of the ninth. He sort of ran his hand up the bat as if the bump. One ball, no strikes. On deck. Two and oh. Simmons checks out Russ Nixon, his third base coach. Andres Thomas, Chuck Tanner got thrown out of this game. That seems like it was three days ago. It was just a couple innings. There's the strength of Simmons, two and one. Rick Anderson has been in professional baseball since 1978. Six and nine, but an earned run average of 3.3. 85 at Tidewater, six and three, an earned run average below two. This year's seven and two, an earned run average of 2.6. Runner going. Pitch drilled, but fouled on the right side. So full count, three and two, and Murphy, in all likelihood, will be running again. He's been in the Mets organization all these years. the 3-2 pitch to Ted Simmons. There he goes. Struck him out. Turns throw. He is sick. So Murphy swipes second as Simmons struck out. Looks like Ted chased the bad ball that time. Anderson's first strikeout. Let's see. The pitch. It looked a little low. Hearn's throw is just on the shortstop side. That's how Murph gets in. Santan had a backhanded, and Murph got the hand in, so he's at second with one out. Now Hearn and Rick Anderson talk it over. Anderson was pitching for the University of Washington back in 1978. Earled a 10-inning no-hit, no-run game. Didn't get the win. Called because of darkness. Runner at second, one out. Curve low, one ball, no strikes. Ken Overfell on deck. Terry Harper has popped the second, singled and walked, and scored a run. He got the jump. You saw that great jump. Hearn has a very good throw, but Murph sliding on the outside got the hand in again. Howard Johnson did tag him. He tagged him up on the shoulder, but watch Murph's hand. Look at his hand. See? His right hand got in. That brings the infield in and gives Harper a little added percentage here. Santana has it, and they've got Murphy hung up. Now he'll try to stay there long enough. Oh, that was almost thrown away, and he did his job. He stayed there long enough for the runner to reach second, and now he's out at the plate. Good job by Murphy. Piper is now at least in scoring position. Six, two, five, two, five, one. If you're scoring, there's the six and the two and the five. If you get one of these wrong, it's okay. We won't grade you wrong. There's the other two. The last five. And here 
comes the one. <laughs> By the number eight. Here's Overtrail. Will they pitch to him? The answer to that question is no. And Bruce Benedict will bat with two on and two out. Braves have scored seven runs here, but they what they've blown some chances. They had runners second, third, nobody out in the fifth after scoring four and failed to score. They left two in the sixth. Had a runner at third with one out here. And so far have not gotten the run across. It'll take a two out hit from Benedict. You're watching TBS and stereo tonight, game two of the double hit. and hit into a force play. He has scored two runs. Harper at second. Over at first. has spent six years at Tidewater. Well, you got to have some stick to it of notes to just hang around. Oh, and two. Benedict quickly in the hole here. Harper at second. Over at fell at first. There are two out. Hubbard is on deck. He has four RBIs in this game. to the fastball. A ball and two strikes. And Hearn is the catcher. See what that means with a runner at second base. Fastball. Still a ball and two strikes. Drove away. Must have lost their illustrator. Popped him up. If it stays in play, and I think it will, Hernandez, and the end is over. So the Braves fail to score. No hits, no runs, one error. And the Braves lost a couple. It's still 7-5 Atlanta at the end of seven. Stay tuned now to the Mikeadin Feet of the Week. Diego again, 4-2, that fine young left hander. Greg Matthews won it. Chicago Club Los Angeles, 9-4. Philadelphia upset Houston, 3-2. The Giants, meanwhile, got the first win out of Steve Carlton. Shut out Pittsburgh, 9-0. And the Giants now trail by a game and a half as Cincinnati came from behind to beat Montreal, 7-6. In the American League, the Yankees lost, but... Boston lost as well, so the Red Sox lead is still four in the American League East. Baltimore wins. They're moving up in back of New York and Boston. Oakland shuts out Toronto 2 0. Detroit over Kansas City 4 3. Detroit, a hot team getting involved in the race. They're in the sixth inning. Texas leading Cleveland 5 3. And that ball game has just started out on the West Coast. And there it is, your Redman scoreboard. Mookie Wilson will pinch it for Danny Heap here as we go to the eighth inning. Wilson had a very peculiar first game, really. It was three out of four, drove in all their runs, scored one, had a home run. But he also, he also made a great catch in the outfield, but he also got picked off twice. And now Bob Skinner is on his way to the mound, and that's going to be all for 
Paul Asenach. That's the second time today Chuck Tanner made the same move in the first game when he brought Asenmaker on. Asenmaker on just wanted him to use an extra player. And then he made his move. So Gino, the ace of the Atlanta bullpen, comes on at the start of the eighth inning. And we'll be back to see how he fares after this. For what just happened, but i got to be honest with you, I don't know what it is. Wilson was announced to pinch hit. And he's going to stay in the game against Ansenmacher, the left-hander. He would have batted right-handed. He's hitting 238 right-handed. But now against the right-hander Garber, he bats left-handed. And from that side, he's hitting 238. Howard Johnson is next, right-handed, as he would bat against Ansenmacher. He's hitting 174, left-handed, as he'll bat against Garber. He's hitting 273. So as I said, there's a reason, but I am not bright enough to find him up. Nor I. Well, that went without saying. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Wilson for Heap. Now they are down to Kevin Mitchell, Gary Carter, and George Foster. Braves have Virgil, Chambliss, and Horner available on their bench. One thing the Braves have done, Asenmacher pitched a couple of innings in the first game. And he may have had his arm tighten up, and they just wanted to make sure that an extra player was used before they brought Garber in. His pitch is a strike. It's all in one. We're in the eighth at 7-5. Atlanta Braves won the first game 4-3. on TBS. Bounce to Hubbard. An easy play. There's the first one. Maybe that's why they made their move because they knew Wilson was going to bounce to Hubbard. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And Pop Skinner probably has that on the sheets on him. Johnson stands up. Howard had a two run homer in the second singled in the fourth bounced out in the sixth was charged with an error that really wasn't his fault in the midst of a four run Atlanta fifth inning breaking ball for a strike Barber is sharp as a tank Goes to 0 2. Catcher Ed Hearn is next. All that's left off the net bench are right hand hitters, but they're pretty good ones. Braves have two right handers and the left hander Chandler. The change hit on the ground to Simmons. Garber will cover. Two up. Well, one thing when Gino keeps that pitch going down and away from a left-hand hitter with this motion, and if you try to pull that ball like Howard Johnson does, that's what you do. You hit a ground ball. So that ball spins away, kind of like cutting the ball, and he's going to hit a ground ball to the right side as he did. And Simmons handled it in good order. They got him by more than a step. Hearn is one for three. He's hitting 320. And he has three home runs. Kevin Mitchell has grabbed the bat and moved on deck. I don't know if he's thrown anything but a strike yet in this up. There's the pinch hitter who will be next. Hopefully leading off the ninth. Fouled away at throwing two. Tim McCarver, the Mets announcer, laid an interesting stand on me between games. The Mets have issued a league low 16 intentional walks all year long. David Johnson really doesn't believe them. 
issuing free tickets. Turn weights. You can't pitch any better than Garber did in the eighth. One, two, three. We go to the bottom half. Your score. Atlanta seven, New York five. Two out of three, a three-run double, a one-run single. He scored a run, driven in four. Griffey has had a pretty good night, too. A run-producing single as a pinch hitter in this game. A couple of doubles, two runs scored, including the game winner in the first game. But it's Hubbard first. Fast strike to Hubbard. The pitch. trying to spell whatever it is that's wrong with Smith and McMurtry. And it's about 108 letters. Line left field. On comes Wilson, but it's a base hit. So Hubbard's good work continues. Here's Griffey. A little insurance couldn't hurt. By the way, the thunder and lightning that we heard goes 15, 20 minutes ago apparently passed by for a week. Bounces it. Boy, just foul pass through. That didn't miss by much. 0 oh 1. We're guessing that Myers, as is so often the case, his number does not show up on the Braves public relations sheet. Griffey's done well over here for the Braves. Our buddy Cornell Washington's done all right with the Yankees, too. Looped into center field. On he comes, and extra hazard. He takes the throw back to first, but Hubbard scampers back. Gene Garber will doubtless try to move the runner over and give Ramirez a chance to pick up an insurance RBI. Barber has hit those on the air. He bats very little, of course, being a relief pitcher. No for three. Go on. One thing the Mets have done tonight in this doubleheader, they have really covered sacrifice attempts. The Braves three outs away from an unlikely, frankly, doubleheader sweep. He swung away. Howard Johnson screamed help at third base. He had charged hard. He was about. 20 feet from Barber. This time he'll try to bunt. He follows it back and it's 0 and 2. Runner at first, one out, bottom of the eighth. In the ninth, the Mets are due to send Santana, the pitcher, and Dykstra to the plate. They will see two pinch hitters and on the top of the New York order. The hits are even at 10 for the first. A bit of a surprise, I think, even to Hernandez. He was ready to charge. Hubbard, a conservative lead over there. A guy high and sink. A ball and two strikes. The Astros lost. The Reds won. The Padres lost. The Giants won. The Dodgers lost in the Western Division. Swings and hits a base hit to right field. First and second one up. And nothing fluky about it, folks. He really ripped it. 
in a surprising night and another surprising development. Gene brings the bat back and leaves Goodwood on it and lines it to right field. So the Braves now have two on and one out. And they get Ramirez up. And if he stays out of the double play, then Murphy would come up. But the Braves have a chance to extend their lead. That's Garber's 17 hit and 109 major league at bats. Ramirez 0 for 4. One ball, no strikes. He has failed to get the ball out of the infield. Two on, one on. That batting average. Not so good. Tried to hit it to right field. Came up empty. In 1981, Ramirez batted 307 times at 218. Since then, his lowest was last year, 248. That's a strength, and he's in the hole, one and two. Two on, one out. Dale Murphy is on deck. Just missed the outside corner, two and two. Great movie tomorrow morning, folks, on TBS. The Magnificent Seven at 10.35 Eastern. The 2-2. Two -two. Line right center base hit. Here comes Hubbard. He'll score. Garber will stop at second. A big insurance run. Well, maybe that'll do Ramirez some good. He went the other way with a two strike pitch and hit it hard. It's eight to five. And when Robbie is hitting well, this is just how he hits, going the opposite way. You see the pitch on the outside part, and Ramirez just lays the bat on it and lines it to right center field. Well, the Braves now have a three run lead and a great chance to sweep this doubleheader. And a chance here to blow it wide open with Murphy and Simmons. Dale is 0 for 4 in this one. He's one for eight on the night. Curve ball hung high and inside. One ball, no strikes. 44,400 the paid attendance here. One out in the inning. Two and oh. Simmons on deck. Tomorrow afternoon, excuse me. Tomorrow night, the Braves fly to Houston. The 2 1. Three balls and a strike. You know, he has the hit privilege if he gets one to his liking here. That base hit by Ramirez played at the first earned run that Rick Anderson has given up this year. He's really struggling. Full count now, three and two. With Barber at second, it's very doubtful that they will send the runner. There's only one out. Well, Garber got a two-strike hit, so did Ramirez. Let's see if Murphy can do the same. No. His problems continue. Pitch is kind of up and in, kind of bears in on Murph and Murph. 
There he, had a, he had a good cut. He just swung right through it. He is a frustrated fellow. Well, here's Simmons. Let's see if he can pick him up. Braves have added one run here. They lead by three. One ball, no strikes. No strength. Three and oh, and they'll green light him, I bet you. Second, Simmons is at first, and Terry Harper is the batter. So far, it's been a long night for Dave Johnson and Mel Stottlemyre. Bud Harrelson there in the New York dugout. I say long night. If they lose this, what are they, 14 and a half? Yeah. Panic will not set in. No, I wouldn't work. think so. A hit from Harper would really ease the way for Garber as he goes to the ninth. Oh and one. Oberfell is next, but Harper's going to have to reach for him to hit. In time, yes, it's one and one. Guyber at third, Ramirez at second, Simmons at first, two outs, a run out. He laid off that high pitch. Two balls and a strike. Base is full of Braves. Popped it up, short right field. On comes Daryl Strawberry, and the inning is over, and the Braves have left nine men in the last four innings. But they pick up a run on three hits. No errors, three left. We go to the ninth with your score. Atlanta eight, New York five. Anderson went two innings, allowed three hits and a run, struck out two, walked the same number. Kevin Mitchell having some year. This big guy even plays shortstop at times for the New York team. He didn't get the sidearm fastball. The change, it's 0-2. The 0-2. There's the change again. He just missed the outside corner. The change is way out in front. The count stays. A ball and two strikes. Got it. High curve. Now there he got away with a pitch. Looked like he hung a curve ball up in his eye. But he swung and missed it. There it is again. He didn't want that thing up there, brother. But he got away with it. One down. That was Garber's second strikeout. He is set down four in a row. A little bit inside, one ball, no strikes. The change is way out in 
front. Gino is weaving his web tonight. The one one pitch. Did he go? No. Two balls and a strike. If the Braves hang on and win this, they will beat Sid Fernandez, who lost to the Dodgers 6 2 May 27th in Los Angeles and 5 4 to the Padres in New York on June 3rd. There's the strike. Two and two. We say that not gloating. We say that just to show you how good Fernandez has been. Two and two, the count to Foster. There's a study in concentration. Foster, a very finicky hitter, and Garber, a very finicky pitcher, so we, this could take a while. We wish you a happy Sunday. Well hit left center, Murphy on the move, still going. hit the daylights out of that. We'll see it again here. Nice play by Murph. And he spun off the wall to avoid injury. Braves one out away from a sweep of the best team in the National League. The Braves earlier this year lost a doubleheader. They're about to win one. They're yet to split one, which is what you normally do when you play a double dip. This guy's a tough little hitter. He looks at a strike. It's one and one. Garber with that characteristic bouncing of the rousing back. On the outside corner, Dykstra didn't think too much of that. Oh. Swung on, high fly ball, twisting foul on the right side and into the seats. The Braves win here. They will be. Again, the 2 2 to Dextra. With Tim Tuffle on deck. Here it is. Hey, got him. The ball game is up. Barber nails it down with two perfect innings, and the Braves have won a doubleheader. 4 3, 8 5 from the Mets. Totals and highlights right after this. Dow both in relief. Ted Simmons with a sacrifice fly, the game winner. Here in the nightcap, Atlanta 8 5, 8 12 and 0 for the Braves. They left 9. 5, 10 and 2 for the Mets. They left 5. Jim Acker gets the win. He's 1 0. Sid Fernandez, the loser, 12 and 3. Gene Garber picks up his 12th save. The game winning RBI goes to Glenn Hubbard. He had four RBIs on the night, his fourth game winning RBI of the year. 44,400 paid to see it. Same two teams tomorrow afternoon. We'll have it for you at 2.05. Rick Mailer and Rick Aguilera will be the starting pitchers. Don't forget a great movie tomorrow morning, 10.35 Eastern Time, folks. The Magnificent Seven and Night Tracks, comma, slash, Chartbusters is next here on TBS. For Ernie Johnson, Pete Van Weeren, John Sterling, and our fine TBS crew, thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow at 2.05. Or actually later today, Eastern Time at 2.05. So long, everybody.